Welcome everybody. In this video I'm going to show you how to use the spot removal tool. So I'm in the develop module and the spot removal tool is right here next to the crop tool. So I'm going to click on it. Now when I open it I get options below that are specific to this tool. Now what we're going to do first is fix some scratches on the baby's forehead. When I hover over the image my mouse is no longer the zoom tool so I can't click to zoom in on the image. One way to zoom in on the image is to use the navigator panel. So I'll expand the left hand side here and I'll click on one to one to zoom in and I'll click and drag inside the triangle to go to the area that I want to work on. Then I can collapse this panel again. Now my spacebar also gives me the hand tool and that allows me to pan around in the image. Control or command plus and minus also will zoom me in and out without me having to go to the navigator panel. So first I'm going to fix this scratch right here. Obviously the tool is too big. I can come over to the side slider here and decrease the size and then come back in the image and see that it's too small and come back to the side slider. That's pretty inefficient though. What I use are the left and right bracket keys to increase and decrease the size. You can also use the scroll wheel on your mouse. So let's click on this spot and notice how it gives me two circles. The one with a plus is what I just fixed. The other one is the source circle. It's where it's drawing clean pixels from to cover up the scratch. Lightroom tries to figure out the best place to draw those clean pixels from. Sometimes it does a great job and sometimes when there's a lot of fine detail in the image it's much more difficult. I'm going to hide the circles. I'm going to type H to hide them so that I can see how well Lightroom did. I can see a tiny little bit of a pattern there. It's not bad. When I zoomed out I'm sure I would never notice it. But let me show you how you can change where the source comes from. I can click and drag inside this source circle to reposition it to take the pixels from somewhere else. So you could take them from another scratch, of course. You could take them from someplace more reasonable. And then H hides the circles again. So now we'll go fix another spot. I'm going to come up to this one and I'll use the left bracket key to make the mouse a little bit smaller. And I'm simply going to click again. I don't need to put the tool away and come back in. We'll just click on the next spot. And it's kind of drawing from the edge of the other scratch, so I'll reposition it over here. Then I'll come over to this one, a little bit bigger brush, and I'll take that one from down here, and I'll type H to hide the circles, and everything looks great. Now notice that this last one that I just fixed is active. It's brighter than the other circle over here, which was the one I fixed before, and I see both the fix and the source. While it's active, I can continue to adjust it. As you saw, I can drag around the source, I can also change the size of the fix by hovering over the fix circle and clicking and dragging to make it smaller or to make it bigger. While it's active, I can also delete it. So if I hit the delete key on the keyboard, the fix is gone and I can start over. Now if I want to go back and work on a fix that's not active, all I have to do is click on it. So I'm going to click back on this one to make it active. I see both circles associated with it now and I can continue to work on it. Same with this one here. Click on it, delete it if I feel like it, redo it, etc. Now H hides and reveals the circles. I can also control the circles from the tool overlay here in the toolbar. With auto on, what it means is that when my mouse is over the image I see the circles and when I move my mouse away from the image the circles are hidden. Always leaves the circles on all the time never leaves them off all the time, and selected leaves just the one I'm currently working on, just the active one showing, and all the others are hidden. So I'll usually leave this on auto, but then I'll also use the H key to toggle the circles on and off. But if you can't find your circles, your tool overlay is set to never. Type H to get it back, or come down here and change the drop down. Okay, let's work on this scratch over here. It's too big to accomplish with one big circle, so instead I'm going to use some smaller overlapping circles. So I'll click, type H to evaluate. The next one I'm going to overlap. Now if I overlap too much, I get the arrow to adjust the first one. So there's a limit to how much I can overlap. Type H. And I'll take this one from over there. Type H. And there's always this additional pressure of doing this on video in terms of getting it perfect. Maybe a little bit more hair pattern which would make it look better. 
and I'm going to consider that good enough. Now let's take a look at another feature of the spot removal tool. I'm going to pan over to the father's eyes. And my goal is going to be to reduce the appearance of the circles under his eyes here. Now we've been working with the spot removal tool at 100% opacity. We wanted to completely cover up the scratches on the child's forehead. In this case, because we want to reduce the appearance of something without eliminating it, we're going to reduce the opacity. So I'll go down to around 30%. And now I'm going to use overlapping circles under the eyes here. And I'm going to draw all of them from down here where there's cleaner skin. Do this fairly quickly. Now I'm using an opacity of 30%. The effect is going to be subtle, but if we use something much stronger, the circles become obvious. Now I'll type H to hide my circles, and I'm going to hit this little switch on and off to see the before and after of just the spot removal work. So before and after. And if I zoom back out, you can see that it just reduces the appearance a little bit. So that's what the opacity slider is all about. Now I'd like to talk about the difference between healing and cloning. Now I'm going to do something very obvious so that you can really see what this is doing. I'm going to fix the father's cheek here. I'm just going to click and I'm going to draw the source from the baby's forehead. Notice how what I've done is a straight pixel copy. If I type H to hide, I've simply copied pixels from the baby's forehead to the father's cheek. That's what clone does. It's a straight copy of pixels. Heal copies the texture, but it preserves the tone and the color of where it's going. So I'm going to switch this to heal. It's still active, so I can go ahead and switch it over by clicking on it. And notice now how we have the smoothness of the baby's skin, but we don't have the color or the tone. So heal copies the texture, but then matches the color and tone of the area where it's going. I will almost always start with heal, and then if I'm having issues with heal, I'll switch over to clone. But generally, I want that blending or that matching to occur. Now, in terms of types of issues you might find, we don't see it here, but sometimes with heal, you can see some bleeding along the edges. It pulls in the tones and the colors around it, and you can see some bleeding. If you see that, at that point, I would switch over to clone and see if that works better for you. So let me show you one other cool thing you can do with the spot removal tool. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to this image here. And I'm going to zoom in. And notice the spot I have here. It's sensor dust. Every image I photograph this day has the same spot in exactly the same place. So let's go ahead and fix it here. I'll reduce the size of my brush with the left bracket key. I'll click and it's gone. Very easy. Now I could have photographed 50 or 200 images that day and they all have the spot in exactly the same place. It would be nice if I could copy my spot removal work from one image over to all of the others that I worked on that day. And in fact I can. What I'm going to do is select all of the images that have the spot including the one that I just worked on. So you can see this other image that I have has the spot as well. So I worked on this second one. I want to copy my spot removal work from the first one to the second one. I want the second one, the one that I fixed, in other words, to be the one that I see on the screen here. So if that's the case, I click inside the thumbnail to make it the active one. So again, I select all of the images, and then I click inside the thumbnail on the one that I've already worked on. Then what I'm going to do over here is change auto sync to sync. We want to sync the changes from one image to all the others I have selected. Then I'm going to click on Sync. And here I'm going to specify what settings from the first image I want to copy to all of the other images. I'm going to start by checking None. And the only thing I want to copy in this case is the spot removal work. So I'm going to click on Spot Removal, and then I'm going to click Synchronize. Now I'll come over to my first image here, and notice how the spot is gone. And if I type H to reveal the circle, you'll see that I have a circle here reflecting just that. If I do before and after in the spot removal work, I can verify that it's fixed. It. So remember that you can synchronize your spot removal work. It's wonderful to get you started cleaning up sensor dust, for example. But it's not perfect, because remember, Lightroom is making a decision where to draw clean pixels from. Sometimes it's going to do a good job, and sometimes it's not. 
So you're still going to have to go through your images one by one and evaluate how well it's done. Finally, let me show you one other fun thing about this spot removal tool. I'll zoom back out and I want to fix this baby's cheek here. So I'm going to click on the cheek and I'm going to draw the fix from over here. There, like father, like son. Well, now you know everything I know about this spot removal.